Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to video two of these more board game unboxing openings. Um, like I said in the first video, this is what we're doing today in this video. Um, but like I said in the last video, we are going to think about moving, rearranging some stuff, and so. No matter what, though, when someone goes in my either my closet or on this shelf over here, um, I want them to grab a board game and be able to just to play. I don't want them to have to open up cards, punch out stuff. Everything should be able ready to rock and roll, and let's just throw it on the table and go. So that's what these videos are. Check out video one. We did two tiny epic games. We also did two smaller card games. Um, in this hall, we have two Munchkin games. Munchkin is by far my favorite. Game one, I spent tons of time focused on what Munchkin is. I'll talk a little bit about it um, in the first one, and then we'll just open up the cards. So first up, we have Munchkin X-Men from USA Opoly. Um, USA Opoly also has a Munchkin Marvel game, which I have. I have all the expansions for. I played that game several times. I love that game. Um, it is ages 10 and up. Play your suit of four. Um, and it is playing time with 120 minutes. It came out in 2017. There is one expansion for it, and that is Munchkin Deadpool, just Deadpool, that I would like to pick up at some point. All right, this, is, of course, is based off Steve Jackson's Munchkin. Um, and so here is the cover. Let's go ahead and get into it. Here is the instruction book. Every one of these USA Opoly Munch games have variant, variant rules, so it's good to probably look over this. If you know the basics of Munchkin, um, I wouldn't worry about it. These have some traps. Munchkin X-Men opened up portals and different things like that. So first off, we're going to start with the dice. So we have an X dice on it, very nice dice. And then here are the tokens for the character cards. And now then here, this is one thing that I do like about these US Upway games is they they give you these character cards that you can actually um, keep track of your score instead of having to have a bunch of kilometers laying around. Uh, it's just nice to be able to just. Um, Mark down with the token or even a board. I like a couple of games I have are on board, so I like that as well. But let's go ahead and get these open here. As I said in my last video, a professional YouTuber would um, edit this cutting of the plastic. I don't. These are basically shot live um, as a plastic went shooting across my window and stuck on my wall. Awesome. All right, so these are kind of cool. They're student IDs. The student ID across the top, so it's kind of set up like you're a student in Charles School for Gifted Youngster. So this one is, first up is Blaster. It is sex female. Once per combat, you may discard a card to give a plus two to either side. This one is... Um, they're all blasted. Oh, he's seen another character. So that's Phoenix, I believe. That's this is Beast Boy. Beast Boy can once per comment you may discard a card that gives you two plus either side. So those are both it. Ah! <coughs> um, that might be Cyclops. He can get you can get an extra plus two in a combat alone, and then I don't exactly remember who that is. And it's the same thing as a heavy hit. Those are heavy hitters. These are the leaders. Um, the leaders, I'll show both sides here. You can get an extra plus two in helping or being helped. So that's cool. They have these. Um, so they have the blast there, the heavy hitter, and the leader. And these are the strategists. You may have two extra cards in your hand. So those are kind of cool to think about. And they have a male and they have a female option for all. So that's kind of cool to think about. Um, as an option in the game. So that's kind of cool. Um, I enjoy those that design of the character cards. All right, let's get into the cards here. All righty, let's pull off the plastic. And here we go. So these are door cards. Kick down the door. 
So these are all dual cards. Of course, in Munchkin, simple kick down the door. You get a heightened senses, put that in your hand. Um, but you kick it on the gore, and you get a level one great end gore, and you have to fight it. So that's basically it. You kick down the door if you get a monster, you have to fight it, or a bad guy. Um, if you um, get something like I just showed you, then you can either loot the room or go searching for trouble. Loot the room as you draw another um, door card. Searching for trouble means you just play a monster out of your own hand. So these are all different type of monsters. So this first group here are the villains. Alrighty. So here you go, level one. He goes up to level seven, level two, three. Um, these are all different villains in the X-Men universe. Um, it goes all the way up to level 18, which is a Magneto, and then level 20, which is Onslaught. And let's see what other things they have here. Mr. Sinister. Um, they have Mystique. They have Sabertooth, Juggernaut. Um, they have Toad, which is a level 1 monster. Um, okay, and then they have... And then they have the affiliation cards. I don't remember exactly what those do. You have two more extra ranks. You may have two extra power worth of ranks. So these are some different affiliation cards. I think that's probably the new rule for this game. And you have some Wandering Monster cards. You have some Team Up cards. And you have a 10 plus to monsters, 5 plus, different stuff like that. So that is this deck. Alrighty, and then let's go ahead and open up this deck of cards. A lot of these are, um, a lot of these cards will be the um, treasures. Um, when you beat a monster, you get treasure cards. So, these are all of the treasure card. I think that's what they're still called in this game. Yep. You get treasure. These are some more doors, some more bonuses. Let's go ahead and put those on there. And then um, these are all my goodness are all of these I'm already so far and these are a good collection of cards. These are there's some ally cards in here. There's of course all of your battle gear and stuff. There's some one shot cards. There's some go up a level. There's some still levels. So there you go. And then in the box is an advertisement for the Deadpool. So there you go. Munchkin X-Men as the dice goes flying everywhere. Um, they don't have any upgrades for this um, as of right now. I don't think they're making any upgrades. The only upgrade they did was for Deadpool, but that, I think it's a standalone game. There you go. Munchkin X-Man. The Marvel game is awesome. Has lots of great upgrades. Has a lot of great cards. They also have dungeons in that game as well. I mean, it's just surprised to see that X-Men doesn't because it came out after. This is Munchkin Oz, uh, based on Steve Jackson's Munchkin. Um, this award-winning game based on classic books by L. Frank Baum. Um, same thing, same different rules. This game might have some different. Um, Things so you gotta always gotta read the direction, but it's basically kick down the door, go from there. Here's an advertisement, so I'll throw that away, and then let's just get into the cards. Here's the dice. Um, here is the symbol for this one, and then here are all the dice. All right, so here are the two sets of cards. Alrighty. So let's develop it. These, these are first. These are treasure. This is the typical Munchkin back if you've never seen Munchkin. This is the typical back for treasures. Of course, the US AI play games have um, new ones, different ones to go along with the theme. But this is a prime example of the card. I'm going to give every card. This is Brains. 
You are smart, so smart that you find one extra treasure whenever you defeat a monster without help. Once you have brains, you never lose it, even if you happen to die. Here's courage. So these are just all, this is a falling house. So it all has to do with Basket of Eggs. It has to do with the Wizard of Oz stories. So Emerald spect Spectacles. Those are cool. So those are all the treasure cards. All right. So these are all, I think, will probably be all doors. There we go. All right. So yeah, these are all door cards. So if you've never seen Munchkin, this is what a door card looks like. And literally, click open the door. And this has curses. They have super Munchkins. They have, you know, plus five to a monster. They have. These are your classes, so classes, allies are back. Toto plus one bonus. Um, two hands, all those are back. And then these are the monsters. So level seven, Whimsies. Level two, Mombai. Level 13, Iron Giant. Level 19, Wicked Witch of the West. Um, level 20, the Gnome King. Um, and then there's some level two, Scoodlers. Level 9 Horners, level 10 Fighting Trees, of course they throw apples. Level 14 Phantasms, Kaladish. So this is really cool. I like this theme. Um, I love Munchkin. Um, it's one of my favorite card games. So definitely. Um, here's some treasures in the middle here. Oh, so the treasures in this game are yellow. And then the doors are green. So here are some more treasures. Alrighty, so there is Munchkin Oz. Pretty simple. I'm not going to show you all the cards because we're already 15 minutes into it. But got this as a Christmas present. Definitely excited to play it sooner than later. Alright, Zombie Slam. This is a game. This is from Mercury Games. This is a game I got from Board Game Bento. It has a... It's from Sin Fong Lim and Jay Cormier. It's a free, optional iOS Android app assistance, colorful and friendly elements. I love zombies. I didn't even tell you when Munchkin Oz came out. All right, I'm done with the phone, so um, my apologies. Let me see here. I'll pick up. That Munchkin Oz has been out for a while. I'll pick this up with Zombie Slam here. Zombie Slam came out in 2017. It is two to six players, 13 and plus. It's 15 minutes. So here is the box. And it is basically a survival game for four days by scavenging a new location, exploring your rooms, and collecting supply cards to fill your backpack. Listen carefully and use your hands to slam the stack when the top supply card matches the request. If you fail to fill a backpack or overcome the hazard you encounter by the end of the day, you become a zombie. That doesn't mean your game is over as undead can rise again and win by infecting the most struggler. Zombie Slam is played over four rounds with all players acting simultaneously, and each round consists of ten turns. Interesting. So it's a slam, slamming game. Um that you have have to listen and slam cards. Cool, I like that. Here are the instructions. We'll take a look at that in a second. Here are some punch boards that I'll show you. This is these are tens and these are some people. These are oh these are zombies and then on this side is five and alive people. That's kind of cool. So they have men and then on the back. I'll pencil those out here in a little bit. Set that over there. And then here are the two stacks of cards. Alrighty, so let's get into those. Maybe. Alright, there we go. I got it all over it. All right, let's go ahead and 
Grind that off. I gotta say, before I get these cards off, I love zombie game. I love zombicide. Um, anything that's to do with zombies, I really enjoy. So these must be the characters. So here is Sean, Barbara, um, who is this? Rich, Kansas. That's in oh, these are the oh, these are the alive version. That's cool. They have the live versions. So there's Kansas, Rich. Barbara, Sean, Ally, Ally, and Cole, and then these are their zombie versions. So that's, those are cool double-sided cards. And then these must be the resources. So you have all sorts of, these must be locations maybe? Here's, cards are trying to fall everywhere. Let's put those in the box. So we have a bathroom, you have, oh, so these are, the people on them on the back are the places by themselves. Interesting. Alrighty, we have cards going everywhere. And then these are the slams. So these are all of the resources that you need. So here is um, medical bags, flashlights. These are drills, meat, I'm guessing. Flashlights, some food. Cool. So then you must like slam it down when you net as the resource you need for your person. Okay, I'm interested to see how you know what you need. There must be. So you have a backpack. I'm interested to see how you know what you need in your backpack. That's the one thing I kind of confused on. Right now in this game is what, what? How do you know what you need in your backpack? Unless it's part of something that you read in the game, because it did say you have to listen and then slam. I'm in very intrigued, folks. I'm very intrigued. If you ever played this game, put your comments in the section below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um. So yeah. So here are more location cards. Oh, these are actually, well, these are doors and different things. I don't know what these are. These are like, so they have, like there's a gun. So I don't know. Oh, these must be for zombies. So you can like break stuff and destroy stuff as zombies. That might be for when you're turned into a zombie. Interesting. And then these cards are one, two, three, four. So there's four cards right there. And then here are the flashlight, gun, medkit, different colors, more weapons. So this must be the zombie pack. I don't know. This must be the zombie pack. Interesting. Or it could be both. I don't I don't know why. It is what it is. I just don't. No, there's some cool cars, some cool artwork. Let's go ahead and check out the um, rule book here. So you get 64 supply cards, 20 hazard cards. So those are the hazard cards with like the guns and stuff in the corner. So eight room cards, six survivor cards, 12 request cards. There's a free app. Turn if you're playing with the zombie slam app or the request cards. See page 14 and agree upon a difficulty level. So I don't know what's on page 14. Game ends and playing with the app. Uh, app will guide you through a quick set of presses. You'll input the number of players in the game and select the individual character each player chooses. You also choose difficulty level and ensure the matches once you've chosen when dealing with hazard cards. So, for example, if a group is in the hospital, you may use any supply cart as a med kit once, once on that day. So, if the group's in the house, then any supply cart can substitute as a plank of wood. So, these are. So, here's a setup example. Interesting. 
For an easy game, deal zero hazard cards. For a hard game, deals two cards. You must survive four days by scavenging a location, exploring the room, and collecting supply cards. To fill your backpack, listen carefully and use a hand to slam a stack when the top supply card matches the request. If you fail to fill a backpack. Oh, so the request is on the app or the request card. That makes perfect sense now. Okay. Each turn, the app calls out verbal requests by stating one feature of the supply card needed to survive. There are 12 different features that may be requested. Something yellow, something green, something blue, something one of anything, two of anything. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Interesting. There's some more intricate stuff about how to turn into a zombie. But yeah, overall, a very cool game. I gotta <clears throat> punch out some stuff here in a little bit. But yeah, Zombie Slam, something I'm looking forward to playing. Here is the back of the box. I forgot to show you that. <clears throat> and then finally, this game also came in. Um, board game bento as I look up the um, game on this encyclopedia app. Cytosis. <clears throat> I gotta spell it correctly for it to find it. That would be helpful. Cytosis is a cell biology game by John J. Cuvio. It is two to five players <clears throat> ages 10 and up and it takes 90 minutes. This comes with the virus expansion included. <clears throat> Is a worker placement game that takes place inside a human cell. Players start out with a number of workers and on a player's turn. They will place one of the workers in an additional location within the cell. Player with the most health points at the end of the game wins. There's some resources. So it's a worker placement game. This is what the box looks like on the back. Like the other video, I will try to put in cards to where what board game bento box the game came in because we did do some unboxing there as well so here is the rule book we'll get to that in a second and then here is the science behind the game so this is the actual science of what's going on in the game so for all you science nerds out there Sheldon Coopers of the world there you go Here's some stuff to punch out. We'll do that after the video, not to bore you with that nonsense. So go ahead and set that off to the side. Alrighty. So here is the board. It's two-sided. So here is one side. And then here is the other side. Hopefully we'll find out here which side you need. But it's very cool board, very big board. I'm guessing you keep the score on the side. Um, you have different body parts. I think it's the exact same board. Um, I don't know what's different about it or if it is a double sided board or it has to do with the expansion. We will hopefully find out sooner then later. So then in this bag, I'll go ahead and open up this big bag. Take out the silica gel. I want to eat that. Here I'm guessing is all of the stuff that you use. So these are all of the different health things that you'll be using in the game. So here's some green blocks. There's yellow blocks. Here are some Sciency things. There's a bunch of more blocks. Here are some more sciency things. Alright, so that's cool. And then here are some bags, I'm guessing, for all of the punch outs. And then here are, I'm guessing, player cards. So. That's what it looks like. 
has an immune response. Micromolecules, ATP, worker goal markers. And then it has Ebola, flu, rhinovirus, probably for you to keep track of. It looks like to be all the same. So those must be the player board. So there's five of those. And let's go ahead. Here are some dice. One of the rule the dice look pretty cool. One of the rule on the dice is the biohazard symbol. And let's go ahead and there are two card packs. Let's go ahead and get into those. Alrighty, let's as I've said before, I'll say it again. Never, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'll say it. Your YouTuber would edit all this out. Maybe that actually helps me open up. Every time I say that, the plastic comes right off. Should I do one of these videos live? I don't know if I, why I asked that question. I'm gonna probably film them all the day, most likely. <clears throat> if you think I should do a video like this live, let me know and then I already asked the question. So these are all different types of cars. These are proton hormones. So these are all the same thing. Yeah, these are all the same thing. Different types of hormones. These are receptors. These are steroid homo hormone receptors. And you have alcohol detoxification. So these are all different things that would happen in your cells. Um, a cell and the cell biology game. I'm, I'm just uh, gave you the title. Carbohydrates take two carb cubes. So there are some different things tells you what to do. There's enzymes. So the oh, um, so these are all the cell components on the back. And then so those. This is a stack of just cell components of what you're going to need in the game to probably. Complete the goals, which are right here. These are some goals. Virus attack immune response. So these are some goal cards. And then here are event cards. And this is Ebola virus, influenza virus, and rhinovirus. So these are um, some different events that will happen throughout the game. Let's go ahead and throw those back down in here. And then let's go ahead and open up this pack of cards. Alrighty. So these are some more event cards. So this is a, these are both glucose transporter booths. Let's see. There are some more event cards right here. So these are all event cards. And then um, here are some goals. And these are epinetic modification cards. Interesting. So it seems like um, I'll organize those cards and go that here. It seems like this is interesting. Let me get back to the instruction booklet here. I have a stack of stuff to organize. Throw that over there. Oh yeah, do not drop that. Here is the rule book. There are a lot of components. Um, there's game setup. Uh, so if you're finding the base game with all the components from the virus expansion and seven epigenetic modification cards, place the board on the center of the play area. So there's a base game side. There must be an expansion side. Gameplay phase one flask placement. Phase two event card revealed and board refreshed. Talks to you more about that. Tells you about cell component cards. 
detail about the different into this. It could be a really cool game. There's a lot of different, a lot of stuff to remember how to end the game. Um, it's interesting. There's a two player modification, and there's some rules on the back for the virus expansion. So, there's some different stuff in the back. Anyway, this could be a cool game. A lot to read, go through, understand what everything means. But definitely a game I like to play at some point. Could be quite like worker placement style games. So thank you so much for watching. This is video two. Stay tuned for video three, probably four, and maybe five of these coming. So stay tuned for all of those. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye for now.